It's project day in the RV again. Today we're installing this 500 amp battery monitor from Renogy. Okay, so we learned that boondocking without proper battery monitoring kind of sucks. Cue the montage. We might be able to do one more night. If we camp one night with electricity, I don't know if that's accurate because we will leave here, go to a campground. Charge our batteries. Our batteries officially got low enough that our furnace turned off yesterday. And so in our rig, what we've got is this terrible thing over here that does three lights. Most of these kinds of battery monitoring systems, if you even call it that, are based on battery voltages. So as a battery depletes, the voltage drops over time. I'm drawing the, the graph of a, of a voltage drop. As the battery depletes, the voltage drops over time. And then based on what the voltage level is, it can kind of estimate how charged the battery is. Problem is that this thing's old. It had crappy lead acid batteries in it. We've since switched to deep cycle AGMs and may go to lithium in the future. All of those have different discharge profiles, which means that that thing's not accurate anyway. And even if it were accurate, what the hell does that be? 70% of what? How many hours is that? How much, how much power am I currently drawing? Okay, this is how much battery I have. How long till I run out? Those are the things that this is gonna answer for us. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. So we've got the battery monitor itself, a shunt along with the shunt mounting plate. And so this is what actually measures all of the loads coming through the battery system. This is a small power lead just to power the monitor. And then the six meters of shielded wire is actually the uh, data wire that will put stuff to the screen. So you have a full six meters of, of distance from the shunt to the screen of mounting flexibility. And there's a couple of additional housekeeping things I'm gonna have to do in order to install this stuff uh, beyond maybe just the basic decorations, which are that uh, my batteries, the terminals have automotive grade clamps on them which is not going to work with this. I need to put uh, some different uh, termination connectors on the end of it. I went on Amazon. I actually got myself a kit of these because uh, I've got some other electrical projects coming up very soon. More to come on that. Um, but basically, just a bunch of different size copper uh, battery cable terminations and shielding for me to use a heat gun and shrink them in place. So I'm going to need to change the terminals on our uh, main positive and negative lead coming from the chassis that's everything's wired in everywhere else so i'm not going to change anything except the wiring right at the batteries uh, and i'm going to change those out and then i'm going to need to find a way to mount this plastic plate that holds the shunt i think i know i'm going to do it um, but i'm going to need some self-tapping screws so i got those separately because uh, it's a metal box that i need to be able to screw into so i got some self-tapping screws and that should be everything we need Oh, and for tools, uh, drill and a jigsaw. Now in our rig, the batteries are underneath the top step. So I've just got to pull this panel off to expose them and start working. Yeah, so these are the terminations in question. And these batteries have both kinds of poles on them. So I want to get rid of the clamp style and move to a bolt nut style like that. The positive one probably is okay. It's the negative one that needs to clamp onto our shunt the right way, and that's the one I probably need to change. Bastard. Cool. So this is the guy we're replacing. Now while I was in here, I decided to replace my jumper wires with a higher gauge one and color-coded uh, because the old ones were just black. Getting this terminal off ended up being the hardest part of the project for me. I used a razor blade and a screwdriver to get the rubber off. And then I had my next problem, which was that the end was completely soldered onto the cable. 
I tried to use a heat gun to soften the solder and pull the end off, but ultimately had to end up getting a little more physical with it. So I finally got that off there. And I did that in a way that I neither condone or recommend. So uh, I will not show you how I did that, but you know, life finds a way. I did not have in my kit of uh, battery cable terminations, anything remotely this thing. I didn't have the zero gauge. So I went to the auto parts store and found this universal side post is what they call it, which is like for one of these screw on posts, uh, side post terminals. So let's see if I can get that to screw on the end and work for us. Like in theory, it should work. I'm not super stoked about like how small of a connector this is. We'll see how well it works, but with battery connections and electrical systems, weak connections basically means heat. Uh, so if it's not connected well, it'll get hot and that's dangerous. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get it all hooked up and I'll verify that it works. And if it works, we'll put some load on it. We'll run the furnace, we'll run some fans, we'll pull some DC load, and then we'll check this for heat and make sure that it worked well. The new terminal ended up fitting great and never produced any heat under load, so that was a relief. It should be all wired up for a test run here. It's pretty easy to do, just follow the diagrams and the instructions, but there's a small positive lead off the positive end that gets screwed into this power terminal on the back, the green guy here. Um, and that's just going to supply positive power to the monitor. And then the B negative side goes to the negative side of your battery. We follow that back, we'll go into our negative pole here. And the P negative side connects to the, the negative side of your load. So just basically everything else, which in our rig is this zero gauge cable that connects up to the rest of the electrical system. So not messing with any of that stuff. I've got it all wired up. I'm gonna plug the unit in real quick to make sure it works before we like put everything away. Okay, cool. This seems to seems to be working. Let's turn some power on. I turned on a couple lights and a vent fan. And you can see we're pulling 46 watts or about three and a half amps out of the battery. Cool. Set my capacity. And then we're just watching it draw. This is the kind of thing I'd rather see more when we're actually in the RV, so I might mount it up here. Well, hello, fam. I where you were. And Henry said, now we'll know how many gallons of light we have left. <laughs> light gallons, that's uh... Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I'm so stoked about this. So there it is all mounted up in there and I can see we're like having a freaking bus bar on the negative side. It's going to be important when we go to wire up solar down the road. So it's just screwed in with these self-tapping screws I bought into this metal wall. And then this thing is vented for regular old lead acid batteries. That's why it's so cold in the stairwell. So I've got holes to pass my shielded wire through. I'm gonna bring that under and try and bring it up to here, which shouldn't be hard because this is the original wiring for the power step. Our step is broken looks like the previous owner smashed it against the curb a couple times just kidding i did too it's hard to do but we knew that wasn't working we don't really care about it all right so routing it where the step power is is a no-go because this actually goes all the way back underneath and back to the dc panel under the seat uh, and i didn't want to follow that so what i did have though was the uh, door entry sensor that would um, trigger the step to pop out when you open the door a little plug here and a way out so here's my shielded wire from the Renogy it runs back into the battery bay and that's all closed up now and uh, I'm gonna run this up and just bring it back in here where I already have a hole for now but along this corner I'm gonna pull that out and run conduit with the battery beneath my feet and I need to get solar power to the roof this is gonna be a really nice wiring bus for me I'll end up putting conduit here to cover up this shielded uh, cord that's just kind of kind of dangle for now. 
And then I have taken my battery monitor, marked the box around where I want it to be, drill out the corners uh, with a big enough drill bit to fit my jigsaw blade through, and then I'll just do the rest with the jigsaw. And we'll see how it goes. The unending question when we were in the snow and boondocking was, you know, how long can we run our furnace for? And now we know the answer is about 34 hours of runtime at our current levels with no other lights or anything on, but about 30, I would say 30 to 35 hours of runtime on the furnace. And now we know for sure. We don't have to wonder, which is awesome. It uses 80 watts to run. All right, well, thanks for coming along for this one. It was a pretty easy um, couple hours in the afternoon, you know, plus or minus a trip to AutoZone. Really, really happy with how this turned out. It's going to be great on our boondocking trips to really know what our battery capacity is doing. And I know it doesn't look all the way finished up, and that's because it's not. I've got some open wires and stuff dangling there, but that's because next week, maybe it's next week's video, coming soon, next on the renovation is a 300 watt solar setup and i'm really excited about that and i'm going to be using this area here to do some uh, wiring around the solar system so i'm not closing it all back up just yet because i got more wiring to do but man am i excited about that so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time